Hey guys, happy Tuesday. We've been talking about uh, giving ourselves away, living a life where we're giving away our talents, our time, our treasure. We're, we're, we're not being selfish. We're not being truth breakers. We talked about the introduced to that yesterday. And so uh, our text scripture for this has been John 3, 16. It says, this is how God loved the world. He gave his own, one and only so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And we said, we talked about this yesterday. We said having a love for the last days, or how, let me say it like this, how do you love in the last days? Because uh, 2 Timothy 3 says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people. And, and I did a, we did a teaching on this a, a while ago. But so you got, you got the circumstance of the last days, but this is how people respond to the pressure of the last days. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful, proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be, they will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. So we kind of pointed out two things yesterday was selfishness and unforgiveness. So, but we are called, I believe we are called, that's part of our assignment is to be salt and light. And we see that over in um, uh, Matthew chapter five, because this is our response or how we should live in the last days. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are light of the world. A town is built a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its lampstand, and yet it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see, they may see your good deeds. Not hear, but see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And so how do we do that? One, we got to be generous. We got to be generous. Acts 20 says this, message paraphrase, and everything I've done, I've demonstrated to you how necessary it is to give, I mean, necessary to work on behalf of the weak and not exploit them. You're not likely uh, to go wrong here if you keep remembering that our master said you're far happier giving than getting. There's a joy that comes from living a generous life that is not available to the selfish man or woman. Many people think They'll be happier if they could just get more. Truth is, they'd be happier if they simp simply became generous with whatever they have right now. So just start being generous now. Just give what you can. Serve where you can. Pray when you can. Whatever, whatever your talents, gifts, and abilities you have, you got to start somewhere. How about starting with what God has given you right now? And then so we got to be generous in the last days. And I believe we got to be peacemakers. You know, Matthew chapter 5 again says this in verse 9, Blessed are the pe peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Those who are actually bringing about, or bring about peace, overcoming evil with good, one way we accomplish this is through spreading the gospel. We did, we talked about that last week, right, about the battlefield. And so because God, God has entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation, that's found over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. People need to know God loves them. People need to hear. They need to hear from us that God's not mad at them, that he has a plan and he has a purpose from them, that he's not done with them. People need to hear that. That's what we need to share, and you know, to, to have them you know, not tell them, get yourself right, then come to church. No, just come. Just come. Come as you are. Just come and allow God to help them go from where they are to where he wants them to be, to get rid of all the habits and whatever else they got going on as they be understand who they are in Christ and begin to live and get on the process, the road to live a holy life. But if we don't get them into the church, it's hard for them to live the life that really God wants them to live. So let me wrap this up. Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, I, prisoner of the Lord, Paul talks about this, beg you uh, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble, gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love, 
Make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, with peace. For there is one body, one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for your future. We are called by God to help bring peace between people and in the feud, not ignite one. Be a peacemaker today. Come on. We love you guys. Enjoy your day. And we'll see you tomorrow on the Faith for Today podcast.